Arthur Rambo. Jean Nicholas Arthur Rambo, UK, slash repo slash, US, slash Rambo slash French, listen, October 20th, 1854, November 10th, 1891, was a French poet known for his influence on modern literature and arts, which prefigured surrealism. Born in Charleville Messier, he started writing at a very young age and excelled as a student, but abandoned his formal education in his teenage years to run away from home to Paris amidst the Franco-Prussian War. During his late adolescence and early adulthood he began the bulk of his literary output, then completely stopped writing at the age of 21, after assembling one of his major works, Illuminations. Rambo was known to have been a libertine and a restless soul, having engaged in an at times violent romantic relationship with fellow poet Paul Verlaine, which lasted nearly two years. After ending his literary career, he traveled extensively on three continents as a merchant before his death from cancer just after his 37th birthday. As a poet, Rambo is well known for his contributions to symbolism and, among other works, for A Season in Hell, a precursor to modernist literature. Life Family and Childhood, 1854-1861 Arthur Rambo was born in the provincial town of Charleville, now part of charleville mezieres in the Ardennes department in northeastern France. He was the second child of Frédéric Rambo, October 7, 1814, November 16, 1878, and Marie Catherine Vitalier Kiewif, March 10, 1825, November 16, 1907. Rambo's father, a Burgundian of Provençal extraction, was an infantry captain who had risen from the ranks, he had spent much of his army career abroad. He participated in the conquest of Algeria from 1844 to 1850, and in 1854 was awarded the Legion of Honor by imperial decree. Captain Rambo was described as good-tempered, easygoing and generous. With the long mustaches and goatee of a chasseur officer. In October 1852, Captain Rambo, then aged 38, was transferred to Mezières where he met Vitalia Kiewif, 11 years his junior, while on a Sunday stroll. She came from a solidly established Ardennes family, but one with its share of Bohemians, two of her brothers were alcoholics. Her personality was the exact opposite of Captain Rambo's, she was narrow-minded, stingy and, completely lacking in a sense of humor. When Charles Huin, an early biographer, interviewed her, he found her withdrawn, stubborn and taciturn. Arthur Rambo's private name for her was Mouth of Darkness, Bouche d'Ombre. Nevertheless, on February 8, 1853, Captain Rambo and Vitaly Akuif married, their firstborn, Jean Nicholas Frederic, Frederic, arrived nine months later on 2nd of November. The next year, on October 20, 1854, Jean Nicholas Arthur, Arthur, was born. Three more children followed, Victorine Pauline Vitalier on June 4, 1857, who died a few weeks later, Jean Rosalie Vitalier, Vitalier, on June 15, 1858 and, finally, Frédéric Marie Isabel, Isabel, on June 1, 1860. Though the marriage lasted seven years, Captain Rambo lived continuously in the matrimonial home for less than three months, from February to May 1853. The rest of the time his military postings, including active service in the Crimean War and the Sardinian Campaign, with medals earned in both, meant he returned home to Charleville only when on leave. He was not at home for his children's births, nor their baptisms. Isabel's birth in 1860 must have been the last straw, as after this Captain Rambo stopped returning home on leave entirely. Though they never divorced, the separation was complete. Thereafter Madame Rambo let herself be known as Widow Rambo and Captain Rambo would describe himself as a widower. Neither the captain nor his children showed the slightest interest in re-establishing contact. Schooling and Teen Years, 1861-1871 Fearing her children were being over-influenced by the neighboring children of the poor, Madame Rambo moved her family to the Cour d'Orléans in 1862. This was a better neighborhood, and the boys, now aged 9 and 8, who had been taught at home by their mother, were now sent to the pension Rosset. Throughout the five years that they attended the school, however, their formidable mother still imposed her will upon them, pushing them for scholastic success. She would punish her sons by making them learn a hundred lines of Latin verse by heart, and further punish any mistakes by depriving them of meals. When Rambo was nine, he wrote a 700-word essay objecting to his having to learn Latin in school vigorously condemning a classical education as a mere gateway to a salaried position, Rambo wrote repeatedly, I will be a randier. 
Rambo disliked schoolwork and resented his mother's constant supervision, the children were not allowed out of their mother's sight, and until they were 15 and 16 respectively, she would walk them home from school. As a boy, Rambo was small and pale with light brown hair, and eyes that his lifelong best friend, Ernest Delahaye, described as pale blue irradiated with dark blue, the loveliest eyes I've seen. An ardent Catholic like his mother, Rambo had his first communion when he was 11. His piety earned him the schoolyard nickname Sale Petty Cagat. That same year, he and his brother were sent to the Collège de Charleville. Up to then, his reading had been largely confined to the Bible, though he had also enjoyed fairy tales and adventure stories, such as the novels of James Fenimore Cooper and Gustave Amar. Dad at the college he became a highly successful student, heading his class in all subjects except mathematics and the sciences, his schoolmasters remarked upon his ability to absorb great quantities of material. He won eight first prizes in the French academic competitions in 1869, including the prize for religious education, and the following year won seven first prizes. Hoping for a brilliant academic career for her second son, Madame Rambo hired a private tutor for Rambo when he reached the third grade. Father Aristotle Heredier succeeded in sparking in the young scholar a love of Greek, Latin and French classical literature, and was the first to encourage the boy to write original verse, in both French and Latin. Rambo's first poem to appear in print was Les Trend des Orphelins, The Orphan's New Year's Gifts, which was published in the January 2, 1870 issue of La Revue Pour Two. Two weeks later, a new teacher of rhetoric, the 22-year-old George Zizembert, started at the Collège de Charleville. Dad Zizembert became Rambo's mentor, and soon a close friendship formed between teacher and student, with Rambo seeing Zizembert as a kind of elder brother. At the age of 15, Rambo was showing maturity as a poet, the first poem he showed as Embert, Ophelia, would later be included in anthologies, and is regarded as one of Rambo's three or four best poems. On May 4, 1870, Rambo's mother wrote to his Embert to complain that he had given Rambo Victor Hugo's Les Miserables to read. The Franco-Prussian War, between Napoleon III's Second French Empire and the Kingdom of Prussia, broke out on July 19, 1870. Five days later, Isambard left Charleville for the summer to stay with his three aunts, the Mrs. Gindre, Indwe. In the meantime, preparations for war continued and the Collège de Charleville became a military hospital. By the end of August, with the countryside in turmoil, Rambo was bored and restless. In search of adventure he ran away by train to Paris without funds for his ticket. Dot on arrival at the Gare du Nord, he was arrested and locked up in Mazas prison to await trial for fair evasion and vagrancy. On about 6 September, Rambo wrote a desperate letter to his Embert, who arranged with the prison governor that Rambo be released into his care. As hostilities were continuing, he stayed with the Mrs. Chindre and Dway until he could be returned to Charleville. His Embert finally handed Rambo over to Madame Rambo on September 27, 1870, but he was at home for only 10 days before running away again. From late October 1870, Rambo's behavior became openly provocative, he drank alcohol, spoke rudely, composed scatological poems, stole books from local shops, and abandoned his characteristically neat appearance by allowing his hair to grow long. On 13 and May 15, 1871, he wrote letters, the Lettre du Voyant, to his Ambert and to his friend Paul de Many respectively, about his method for attaining poetical transcendence or visionary power through a long, intimidating, immense and rational derangement of all the senses. Doubt the sufferings are enormous, but one must be strong, be born a poet, and I have recognized myself as a poet. Life with Verlaine, 1871-1875, Rambo wrote to several poets but received no replies, so his friend, office employee Charles Auguste Britannia, advised him to write to Paul Verlaine, an eminent symbolist poet. Rambo sent Verlaine two letters with several of his poems, including the hypnotic, finally shocking Le Dormeur du Val, The Sleeper in the Valley, in which nature is called upon to comfort an apparently sleeping soldier. Verlaine was intrigued by Rambo, and replied, Come, dear great soul. We await you, we desire you, sending him a one-way ticket to Paris. Rambo arrived in late September 1871 and resided briefly in Verlaine's home. Verlaine's wife, Mathilde Mott, was 17 years old and pregnant, and Verlaine had recently left his job and started drinking. In later published recollections of his first sight of Rambo at the age of 17, Verlaine described him as having the real head of a child, chubby and fresh, on a big, 
bony, rather clumsy body of a still growing adolescent, with a very strong Ardennes accent that was almost a dialect. His voice had highs and lows as if it were breaking. Rambo and Verlaine began a short and toured affair. They led a wild, vagabond like life spiced by absinthe, opium, and hashish. The Parisian literary coterie was scandalized by Rambo, whose behavior was that of the archetypal and fond terrible, yet throughout this period he continued to write poems. Their stormy relationship eventually brought them to London in September 1872, a period over which Rambo would later express regret. During this time, Verlaine abandoned his wife and infant son, both of whom he had abused in his alcoholic rages. In London they lived in considerable poverty in Bloomsbury and in Camden Town, scraping a living mostly from teaching, as well as with an allowance from Verlaine's mother. Rambo spent his days in the reading room of the British Museum where heating, lighting, pens and ink were free. The relationship between the two poets grew increasingly bitter, and Verlaine abandoned Rambo in London to meet his wife in Brussels. In late June 1873, Verlaine returned to Paris alone, but quickly began to mourn Rambo's absence. On 8 July he telegraphed Rambo, asking him to come to the Hotel Liège in Brussels. The reunion went badly, they argued continuously, and Verlaine took refuge in heavy drinking. On the morning of 10 July, Verlaine bought a revolver and ammunition. About 1600 hours, in a drunken rage, he fired two shots at Rambo, one of them wounding the 18-year-old in the left wrist. Rambo initially dismissed the wound as superficial but had it dressed at the St. Jean Hospital nevertheless. He did not immediately file charges, but decided to leave Brussels. About 20 hundred hours, Verlaine and his mother accompanied Rambo to the Gare du Midi railway station. On the way, by Rambo's account, Verlaine behaved as if he were insane. Fearing that Verlaine, with pistol in pocket, might shoot him again, Rambo ran off and begged a policeman to arrest him. Verlaine was charged with attempted murder, then subjected to a humiliating medical legal examination. He was also interrogated about his correspondence with Rambo and the nature of their relationship. The bullet was eventually removed on 17 July and Rambo withdrew his complaint. The charges were reduced to wounding with a firearm, and on August 8, 1873 Verlaine was sentenced to two years in prison. Rambo returned home to Charleville and completed his prose war Kun Saison en Enfer, a season in hell still widely regarded as a pioneering example of modern symbolist writing. In the work it is widely interpreted that he refers to Verlaine as his pitiful brother, Frere Pithoible, and the Mad Virgin, Vierge Foal, and to himself as the hellish husband, Lepu Infernal, and described their life together as a domestic farce, droll de ménage. In 1874, he returned to London with the poet Germain Nouveau. They lived together for three months while he put together his groundbreaking illuminations. Travels, 1875-1880 Rambo and Verlaine met for the last time in March 1875, in Stuttgart, after Verlaine's release from prison and his conversion to Catholicism. By then Rambo had given up writing in favor of a steady, working life. Some speculate he was fed up with his former wild living, or that the recklessness itself had been the source of his creativity. He continued to travel extensively in Europe, mostly on foot. In May 1876 he enlisted as a soldier in the Dutch colonial army to get free passage to Java in the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia. Four months later he deserted and fled into the jungle. He managed to return incognito to France by ship, as a deserter he would have faced a Dutch firing squad had he been caught. In December 1878, Rambo journeyed to Larnaca in Cyprus, where he worked for a construction company as a stone quarry foreman. In May of the following year he had to leave Cyprus because of a fever, which on his return to France was diagnosed as typhoid. Abyssinia, 1880-1891 Rambo finally settled in Aden, Yemen, in 1880, as a main employee in the Bardi Agency, going on to run the firm's agency in Harar, Ethiopia. In 1884, his report on the Okaden was presented and published by the Société de Géographie in Paris. In the same year he left his job at Bardi's to become a merchant on his own account in Harar, where his commercial dealings included coffee and, generally outdated, firearms. At the same time he also engaged in exploring, and struck up a close friendship with the governor of Harar, Rasmakon and Valde Mikael, father of future Emperor Haile Selassie. He maintained friendly relationships with the official tutor of the young heir. Rambo worked in the coffee trade. He was, in fact, a pioneer in the business, the first European to oversee the export of the celebrated coffee of Harar from the country where coffee was born. 
he was only the third European ever to set foot in the city, and the first to do business there. In 1885, Rambo became involved in a major deal to sell old rifles to the King of Shewa. The explorer Paul Solilet became involved early in 1886. The arms were landed at Tajura in February, but could not be moved inland because Leon Slagard, governor of the new French administration of Obok and its dependencies, issued an order on April 12, 1886 prohibiting the sale of weapons. Sickness and Death, 1891 In February 1891, in Aden, Rambo developed what he initially thought was arthritis in his right knee. It failed to respond to treatment, and by March had become so painful that he prepared to return to France for treatment. Before leaving, Rambo consulted a British doctor who mistakenly diagnosed tubercular synovitis, and recommended immediate amputation. Rambo remained in Aden until 7 May to set his financial affairs in order, then caught a steamer, La Mazone, back to France for the 13-day voyage. On arrival in Marseille, he was admitted to the Hôpital de la Conception where, a week later on 27 May, his right leg was amputated. The post-operative diagnosis was bone cancer, probably osteosarcoma. After a short stay at the family farm in Roche, from 23 July to 23 August, he attempted to travel back to Africa, but on the way his health deteriorated, and he was readmitted to the Hôpital de la Conception in Marseille. He spent some time there in great pain, attended by his sister Isabel. He received the last rites from a priest before dying on November 10, 1891, at the age of 37. The remains were sent across France to his hometown and he was buried in charleville messieres On the 100th anniversary of Rambo's birth, Thomas Bernhardt delivered a memorial lecture on Rambo and described his end. Poetry In May 1871, aged 16, Rambo wrote two letters explaining his poetic philosophy. The first was written 13 May to his Embird, in which Rambo explained. Rambo was inspired by the work of Charles Baudelaire. This inspiration would help him create a symbolism style of poetry. Rambo said much the same in his second letter, commonly called the Lettre du Voyant, Letter of the Seer. Written 15 May, before his first trip to Paris, to his friend Paul de Meny, the letter expounded his revolutionary theories about poetry and life while also denouncing most poets that preceded him. Wishing for new poetic forms and ideas, he wrote. Rambo expounded the same ideas in his poem Le Bateau Ivre, The Drunken Boat. This hundred-line poem tells the tale of a boat that breaks free of human society when its handlers are killed by redskins, po rouges. At first thinking that it is drifting where it pleases, the boat soon realizes that it is being guided by into the poem of the sea. It sees visions both magnificent, the awakening blue and yellow of singing phosphorescence, levage on at blue day phosphorescenters, and disgusting, nets wherein the reeds an entire leviathan was rotting nasses, upurik dongs lay jongs taut on leviathan. It ends floating and washed clean, wishing only to sink and become one with the sea. Archibald MacLeish has commented on this poem, anyone who doubts that poetry can say what prose cannot has only to read the so-called lettre du voyant and bateau ivre together. What is pretentious and adolescent in the lettre is true in the poem, unanswerably true. French poet Paul Valéry stated that all known literature is written in the language of common sense, except Rambo's. His poetry influenced the symbolists, Dadaists, and surrealists, and later writers adopted not only some of his themes, but also his inventive use of form and language. Letters Rambo was a prolific correspondent and his letters provide vivid accounts of his life and relationships. Rambo's letters concerning his literary life were first published by various periodicals. In 1931 they were collected and published by Jean-Marie Carré. Many errors were corrected in the play Yacht edition. The letters written in Africa were first published by Paterne Barakin, the poet's brother-in-law, who took the liberty of making many changes in the texts. Works Works published before 1891 Posthumous works Cultural legacy Rambo's poetry as well as his life, influenced many 20th century writers, musicians, and artists, including Andre Breton, Dylan Thomas, Mark Bolan, Henri Cartier Bresson, Jack Kerouac, Pier Paolo Pasolini, Neil Cassidy, Vladimir Nabokov, Bob Dylan, Luis Alberto Spinetta, Roberto Bolaño, Patti Smith, Red Ryder, Pete Daugherty, Tom Verlaine, Leo Ferre, Henry Miller, Van Morrison, Penny Rambo, Jim Morrison, Adam Hayden and Richie Edwards. Rambo's life has been portrayed in several films. 
Italian filmmaker Nilo Risi's film Unista Gione all'Inferno, 1971, A Season in Hell, starred Terence Stamp as Rambo and Jean-Claude Riley as Paul Verlaine. Rambo is mentioned in the cult film Eddie and the Cruisers, 1983, along with the storyline that the group's second album was entitled A Season in Hell. In 1995, Polish filmmaker Agnieszka Holland directed Total Eclipse, which was based on a play by Christopher Hampton who also wrote the screenplay. The film starred Leonardo DiCaprio as Rambo and David Thewlis as Paul Verlaine. Rambo is the protagonist of the opera Rambo, Ulla Fils du Soleil, 1978, by Italian composer Lorenzo Ferrero. In the 1981 Brazilian film Eu Te Amo Sonia Braga's character is a young woman who has a degree in art history. She tells her lover, Paolo, about her degree and that Arthur Rambo was a fag who threw shit on the wall and wrote poetry. In 2012, composer John Zorn released a CD titled Rambo, featuring four compositions inspired by Rambo's work, Bateau Ivra, A Chamber Octet, A Season in Hell, Electronic Music, Illuminations, Piano, Bass and Drums, and Conneries, featuring Matthew and Mallory greeting from Rambo's work. Rambo is also mentioned in the Coco Rosie song Terrible Angels, from their album La Maison de Mon Rev, 2004. In his 1939 composition Les Illuminations British composer Benjamin Britten set selections of Rambo's work of the same name to music for soprano or tenor soloist and string orchestra. Hans Werner Hense set one of the poems in Illuminations, being beauteous, as a cantata for coloratura soprano, harp and four cellos in 1963. In a scene in I'm Not There, 2007, a young Bob Dylan, played by Ben Wisha, is portrayed identifying himself as Arthur Rambo by spelling Rambo's name and giving 20th of October as his birthday. In Dylan's 1975 number one hit self-written album, Blood on the Tracks, You're Gonna Make Me Lonesome When You Go contains the following lyrics. The album liner notes written by Pete Hamill also made reference to Rambo, Dylan here tips his hat to Rambo and Verlaine, knowing all about the seasons in hell, but he insists on his right to speak of love, that human emotion that still exists, in Faulkner's phrase, in spite of, not because. Dot over the span of his entire musical career, 1961 through present, Dylan has referred to Rambo multiple times. Present, Dylan has referred to Rambo multiple times. Present, Dylan has referred to Rambo multiple times. Present, 